everyone. Welcome back to our journey as we bring the B58 Hustler back to life. If you're new to the channel, I'm Chris, and I'm super excited to be sharing this journey with you. This is a competition RC scale build, and so the goal is to make this model as representative to the full scale as possible. And so in this video, we're covering hatch, pinning, and cleanup, and getting all four propulsion systems installed. I'm using four Schubler EDFs, which are gonna sound amazing in there. The goal is by the end of this video to have the airplane more or less ready to fly and taxiing under its own power. This is going to be a huge milestone, so you're not going to want to miss it at the end. And so let's get into it because there is a whole lot of work to do. So let's go. All right, so let's check in real quick. All of the hatches on the fuselage are done. For the backbone hatch, 
I actually used a small scale detail as my hatch latch release. And on the full scale airplane, it's part of the nav sensors. But to accomplish that, I used a park flyer belt crank, some wire and some concentric brass tubing. That way I could put the release where I needed it to be and then pin it at the back of the hatch. You know, I'm all about trying to hide things and keep things as scale as possible. And so doing that, I was able to hide anything that, you know, otherwise wouldn't be scale on the backbone of the airplane. And so for the canopy hatch, I did something slightly different in that I had a standard hatch latch, then used concentric aluminum tubing to route the pin forward into the nose area from the main hatch. To get to it, I have to remove the backbone hatch and then that gives me access to the canopy hatch latch. And so otherwise, cutting out the windscreens, I used a razor saw there, but I wanted to mention to glue the canopy in, I used magnets to hold it all in place and used Formula 560 canopy glue to glue it. The nice thing with that glue is it, it's slow to cure. And so that gave me a lot of time to be able to clean up the canopy while it dried. Uh, and then the magnets just simply held it all in place. And so it worked out really fantastic. And now it's time to get onto the EDF installations. Four engines means, of course, four times the fun. And so, yeah, let's get onto that. Speaking of electric ducted fans, this video is brought to you by Schubler Technologies. As electric ducted fans go, these are the best of the best hands down, they are incredible quality, they are incredible performance. And so they offer sizes from 69 millimeter, which we're using here on the Hustler, all the way up to 129 millimeter EDFs for those monster projects. And for the case here, we are using four DS30 HDS 69 millimeter fans powered by six cells each. I have a link to their site down in the description. These are incredible fans and I can't thank them enough for their support on this project.
Wow, that was a ton of work, but you know, we've got four nacelles, four engines, that means four times the fun. And I also have lights in it too, but we'll cover that in the next video. But what it means is at this point, the airplane is more or less ready to fly, uh, minus a couple small things. And so getting it to this point, the first step was to set up all of the fan hatches. I used 1 64th inch plywood to create a capture slot, which captures the flange in the nacelle. Uh, so that way it pulls everything kind of into alignment. I don't expect to have to access the fans a whole bunch. So I just went with the screws there and they're countersunk so you can't see them at all. And to get the fans in, I simply epoxied basswood rails in there. I made a thick mylar exhaust and that combined with the inlet, just kind of lined everything up, got it all in the right place. When the fans were more permanently installed, I used a lighter weight mylar exhaust, and those were made out of four mil mylar. Using packing tape to get it all together, uh, and there's a cone program that I use to get the shape for it as well. Oh, and I have my 28 millimeter in-runner mini burners in there, simulated afterburners. They look amazing. The airplane's not gonna do Mach 2 if it doesn't have afterburner after all. And so once I had it all in there, I used a product called icing, which is basically a lightweight Bondo material. I put it all around the hatches. And once the material started to harden, it got kind of rubbery. I used a razor blade to cut through the perimeter of the hatch and then sanded it all smooth. That created a very fine line for all of the hatches and they all look like panel lines. And so yeah, this is huge progress. Now it's time to check everything out. I haven't even had a chance to run the fans yet. So we're gonna take it out to the field, do some taxi testing, do some run-ups. And so yeah, let's check it out. Taxi Dave, time to see how she does. I'll just set it right here. I got two 7,000s, and so the way they are running is the inboard nacelles or fans are, are running on one pack, the outboard fans are running on a second pack, and uh, these just go in here kind of side by side. So 57 amps on a single fan. What do you say when you forget to put your shoot on? Oh, shoot. <laughs> For the record, he said that, not me. acceleration. <laughs> I didn't really deploy it. Cool. 
The airplane is more or less flyable now. She's taxiing on her own power. There's only just a few things left to do to get it truly flyable. But otherwise from here, we're actually going to paint the airframe. We're gonna paint it up in one of the prototype schemes. And so I'm really excited to get into that. And so until then, in case you missed our last build video, you can see that here. And until next time, I'll see you at the field.